Hello, we are now continuing the um, introduction to the Big Data Applications and Analytics course, which is part of the Data Science Curriculum at Indiana University, Bloomington. This last part starts off with a discussion of clouds. And of course, clouds are central to our whole um, philosophy of this course, which is that when you do anything in, in this area, you're going to be using clouds. You're going to be running data analytics. You're going to do it in collaboration with lots of people. You're going to process big data, and you're going to solve problems in lots of different areas, which are generically called X informatics, like um, bioinformatics or business informatics or wealth informatics, or and sometimes and also you can also refer it to as e e e biology or e chemistry or or e wealth and what have you. So that's the, and then of course we have this collage we put together of all these different informatics areas uh, as they're documented on the web. So here we discuss cloud infrastructure. And this first slide, which is bobbing, which is dynamically um, instantiating itself, is probably already out of date. It came from a 2012 talk given by Microsoft. And it points out that um, a cloud, although it looks like a single entity, is actually like some of these other concepts like grids are made up of lots of parts. The difference is grids expose those different parts, clouds hide those parts, and they provide, in this case, the common Azure interface to any part of the cloud. And they have, as you see here, many data sets, data centers of different sizes. We're maybe the largest data centers having up to uh, a million servers um, in them, which is quite a lot of servers. Bigger than I'm sure your university computer center or your, your probably your company's computer center. And uh, Microsoft says they have around 100 of these centers. And this one here represents um, some sort of uh, view of the future as to how these uh, centers will be produced. Uh, a lot of, because you're doing these things on a totally different scale from before, it makes a lot of difference how you build them. Because you want to build them so they're very, very cheap to build, very easy to add resources, very uh, low in power. And so here we have a, a vision of actually uh, some, some Microsoft uh, future generation um, data center, which is sort of open, doesn't have, uh, doesn't waste money on bricks and tops and things, because one key feature of clouds is, clouds are already so large, they have to worry intensely about fault tolerance. Once you've, once you've um, decided you can cope with faults, then it, faults don't matter so much. So you can actually afford to build centers which are better, easier to scale and cheaper to run, but actually might have more faults, because you've already decided faults, as long as they're a reasonable level, don't matter so much. So that's a very important, interesting concept. Here's another uh, slide. This one effectively comes, I think, from uh, Google, although the talk um, is from again Microsoft. It points out some of the reasons for um, clouds being a good idea. It's just the economy of scale, namely, um, we have here, um, you know, the, the networking. If you take a large data center, you might be um, seven times as efficient in terms of networking costs, six times as efficient in storage costs, and seven times efficient, as efficient in um, administration. Because if you have lots of the same thing, you do not need to scale up the system admins proportional to the number of computers. And here we have a nice little picture to show you that these data centers are over 10 times bigger than a football field. So, and here is these um, big Google data centers. They have um, up to, I mean, I think centers around now typically at tens of megawatts, and they're going to get up to 200 megawatts in the future. And um, the current CPUs are around 150 watts per CPU. And here we are obviously placing the, the centers in a place where electrical power is clean and cheap. Because um, that's another interesting feature of clouds. Once you decide you're going to do things remotely, 
then you don't really care whether it's at your own university or actually sitting um, in a naturally uh, power efficient, uh, easy to easy to maintain place, and so you get green cheap power. Um, these are, of course, reasonably important issues for the future of things like computer centers. If we decide that really it doesn't matter, this might just maybe a mistake to have general purpose computers next to us, then uh, that's a reasonably important deduction. And people will often remark that, the, that we go through these trends that one day computers are centralized, the next day they're distributed, and in the moment we're going towards a uh, centralized computers. Um, however, we're going to a totally distributed sensor world, with the whole world covered with sensors. That's the Internet of Things with the 75 billion devices by 2020. But they're talking to centralized computers. So we have this interesting difference between the sensors and the computers. Clouds here are the computers, so they're centralized. And they're likely to remain so for the near future. Uh, <coughs> this uh, illustrates a little more detail of what we had on an earlier slide. That the, uh, another important um, aspect of building these things is to make them modular. And one of the ideas is that, that the um, typical shipping rack is the uh, is a natural unit of computing. And uh, this uh, press release here says that for the Chicago facility, which is now not so new. Uh, Microsoft will have a couple of hundred shipping containers, and uh, that's the basic unit. And this is this is all in efficiency issues. We need to have ideas of scale, and that when you want another hundred thousand computers, you just do something very simple. Here's a picture of eBay showing that. Um, you know, computer, computers are actually, you know, people often go on towards the computer centers, and they're only impressive by the fact that they never end. And so here we look into a bunch of eBay computers never ending. Of course, eBay has lots of computers, but not as many as Amazon or Google or Microsoft. Here's some comment on greenness, and there is an important thing we call the PUE which is the total facility power over the IT equipment power. So if it was one, all your power was going into the computers and calculating numbers and storing data. However, if PUE was 1.8, which is what the average was a couple of years ago, because that's when I, this slide came from, um, then if it's 1.8, that says 80, that when you supply 1.8 units of power, um, forty percent of I mean forty percent of it is wasted. But clouds are much nearer, much more efficient. They only waste about ten to twenty percent of the power with a PUE between one point one and one point two. And I think clouds have actually pioneered the fact that data centers can be made more efficiently. And um, that's uh, an important, you know, an important uh, result of the cloud. Initiative, it has pioneered more efficient uh, data centers. I already discussed with you the fourth generation data centers, so that everything is modular and uh, you're building everything in a very simple, scalable fashion. Scalability is critical. I say we're trading off fault tolerance, we're trading off peak performance of an individual node against scalability, because we're doing horizontal scaling. That we do a lot of processing by taking the data and spreading that data across the computers. We're not making that computer run a lot faster. So that's vertical scaling is making individual resource run faster. Horizontal scaling spreads the data across lots and lots of resources. That's the classic Hadoop HDFS style computing. If we look at um, 2010, um, there were meant to be 30 million servers worldwide. Uh, we have an estimate at the bottom in 2014, we're going to add 10 million new servers and 10 exabytes of storage in cloud centers. So this number of 30 million is probably no longer correct. These types of numbers are relatively hard to find because 
places like Microsoft and Google tend to keep them pretty secret, and so does Amazon. They don't want to know, tell you how many computers they have, because then you could work out how efficient they are and how much money Amazon is making per computer, and then there will people who make nasty remarks, or maybe, maybe they'll be so dazed and dazzled it will be wonderful. But it's this is a very commercially aggressive world where small differences are very important. Um, so if you look, actually Google issued some numbers which allow people to sort of reverse engineer the number of servers based on what they said about R. If you looked at this time of 2010, uh, Google was um, 200 megawatts, which is 1% of the total power, less than 1% of the total power used in data centers. And that actually they have, they're actually 3% of the total compute power, that's because they're, they're, they're um, centers have a PUE around one, and at this time, the average center had a PUE around three. So, um, this is just an interesting estimate of size. I'm sure Google has more than 900,000 servers now, as we look from this number of 10 million for the total, for the estimate of what's gonna happen in 2014 to 15 in commercial clouds, and that Google will be a significant participator in that 10 million. Here we can actually now look at supercomputers. Um, one of the top supercomputers that no longer is, it's a, now a machine in China, is Sequoia at uh, Lawrence Livermore Laboratory in, in California. Has performance of so-called 16 petaflops, eight megawatts of power, and it has um, 1.6 million cores and 1.6 petabytes of memory. So if you compare that with the largest cloud computing centers, they have 100,000 servers, which is a roughly the same number of cores. And uh, they, uh, although as we pointed out in the earlier slides, that they actually now at the day have a million servers. So these cloud centers are at least as large as the largest supercomputers and probably significantly bigger. So if we look at these supercomputers, we have to remember that supercomputers are aimed at individual jobs. Clouds are aimed at, aimed at all jobs. So clouds are much bigger. But, if you, but they don't on any one job necessarily uh, get the same performance as supercomputers. Although if you consider Google search as a single job, uh, not something that's quite the way to think about it. That Google search is using much more computing power than a single supercomputer, as is Microsoft Search and uh, and uh, Yahoo and people like that. So, uh, so we look at this um, world. We're seeing numbers, tens of millions. We're seeing totals, 30 to 50 million servers. We're seeing 20, 30 percent of them, maybe 30 percent of those in clouds, and. Supercomputers are, um, well, I say here, 1% of the total cloud computing. And of course, supercomputers, I mean, you add them up, you get quite a big additional factor. So, technical computer and supercomputers add up to a reasonable computer power, but they're not as big as today's clouds. Clouds have much more computing than high performance computing. High performance computing is critical, it gives you peak performance. With closely coupled, highly parallel jobs. Clouds do not do that. Clouds are doing uh, a much a different type of computing, which actually tends to be more relevant for data science, where the peak performance is uh, the optimal communication is not quite as necessary and things like that. So these are issues we can discuss later on, but uh, let's just get an idea of where we're talking about. 50 million servers. And only. Uh, 100,000 of them in a single supercomputer. Here we have a, a well-known chart from NIST, which tells you why clouds are important. They have elasticity, so you can, if you want 1,000 cores, you get 1,000 cores. You don't have to write a purchase order to buy the computers. They're accessible from anyone. They are sitting possibly in this remote, Power efficient place, but they're they're sitting with broad network access. Pool resources are pooled. You share clouds. That has important sort of somewhat negative security issues, and you pay for what you use. 
you don't, so it's, um, it's expense that you use it, not as capital. And their whole allocation scheme is highly flexible. And as we pointed out several times in this uh, lesson, there are economies of scale in performance and power. Something we'll discuss later on is the clouds also have amazing new software models. The cloud computing um, initiative is not only told, not only produced clouds, it's told you how to build data centers better. It's produced whole new software models, virtual machines, platform as a service, programming ideas like MapReduce and NoSQL and Big Data and Big Table and so on. And these are all important. So clouds, because they're solving bigger problems than anybody ever solved before, have produced huge amounts of innovation. So now we, uh, that's our uh, finish of our overview of cloud computing, which underlies all of this uh, class. And we'll move on to more features of the data deluge. Thank you very much.